Welcome to Good News Week, coming tonight from the John Brumby Memorial Shed. <laughs> as part of the 1999 Melbourne International Comedy Festival. And the big news? As a result of fierce criticism from all over the country, the Howard government has now offered to provide a safe haven for 4,000 refugees from Kosovo. The Prime Minister stressed the decision represented a temporary humanitarian gesture, which fits in perfectly with his image as a temporary humanitarian. <laughs> Under special legislation, the refugees will be given asylum in Australia and allowed to stay for up to three months, longer if necessary, but only if they can prove a prior and ongoing occupation of the land. <laughs> NATO's bombing campaign has been so fierce, seismologists claim it's actually loosened Yugoslavia's tectonic plates. Alexander Downer is now calling for an airlift of all the pieces so Kosovo can be reassembled in a much friendlier nation. <laughs> As the debate about the film Lolita continues to rage, another movie has been banned in Australia. A pornographic video filmed in zero gravity at the Kennedy Space Centre. <laughs> the video is called The Uranus Experiment. <laughs> Yet no one ever goes anywhere near the planet. <laughs> Producers claim it's the first adult video to show lovemaking in zero gravity. So straight after sex, when the guy rolls over to go to sleep, just keeps rolling. Not surprisingly, the female lead was not impressed. She said her co-star's foreplay technique could be summed up by the phrase, open the pod bay doors, Hal. <laughs> open the pod bay doors. In exciting news from the bottom of Sydney Harbour, a previously unknown species of giant prawn has been found by researchers from the Australian Museum. The species is so large, if you ordered prawn balls in a restaurant, that's exactly what you would get. <laughs> Museum researchers say the prawns have already turned up in Sydney's fish markets. One family complained that never had a prawn cocktail before that dragged off one of the children. <laughs> this is the most macho prawn ever discovered. In fact, after a few drinks, it'll probably rip off its own head. <laughs> Sadly, the discovery of the nasty giant prawn in Sydney waters makes it even more regrettable but Avalon lost Baywatch. <laughs> In Canberra, the Prime Minister has had the desk once used by his hero, Sir Robert Menzies, moved into his office. Howard hated his last desk. It was full of soggy tissues left behind by Bo Hawke. <laughs> and it always smelled a bit off after Paul Keating used it to sign his piggery deal. <laughs> Howard finds the Menzies desk reassuring. And for the scary times, he's also got Billy McMahon's potty. And he does look good behind Sir Robert's desk. But when he talks, he keeps banging his chin. <laughs> the desk represents everything John Howard strives for. It's old fashioned and totally wooden. <laughs> and that's the good news. Good evening tonight in front of a select group of family and friends. <laughs> the shy retiring Julie McCrossan, <laughs> one of the stars of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival from the US of A, the dynamic, exciting Rich Hall. I'm American. I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> Across the board, sorry. <laughs> and from full frontal, the well mannered, ladylike Julia Zamira. And they're getting down and dirty with the friend to all creatures, Mikey Robbins! And two more of the cavalcade of international stars here for the Comedy Festival from Scotland, doing a show called Frank in this very town hall, the vicious brutal Lynn Ferguson! 
And also from Scotland, the calm and quiet. <laughs> Phil Kay! Oh! Are you ready to go, Melbourne? Okay, round one is What's the Story? Julie, Rich, Julia, what's going on here? Okay. Gary Brack, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's for the bosses. <laughs> this would be Doctor looking at cardiovascular systems. Oh, all right, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, very unusually, that was a doctor signing something that wasn't directly related to a Medicare form and therefore money into the doctor's pocket. <laughs> no offence, both my brothers are doctors, I can say it. Well, we're a nation of sick leave takers. You know, ring up, oh, can't manage it. Oh, I have to stay home. Sicky, I've got a friend who's a doctor. He'll sign. It's all right. But now, you or me, the ordinary man and woman on the street, reach even for you, being an American, will have to get a special thing signed by a special person of the law to prove that, yay, merrily, or verily, we are all uh, truly sick. So do, if you get sick in your country, can you sign a form and, and get some pay? Or do, well, you, do you still have pay no, in America? Well, you, well, you don't have, you don't have health care in America. No. no. Oh, so simple. you just walk into a hospital and it's, and it's you know, you're Dying. on your own. You can walk in, there's a sign, I was in a hospital in New York City and it said, for emergencies, then it said, for extreme emergencies, <laughs> all right? Extreme, like you walk in, you got a knife in your head, you know, and now you go, well, I got a knife in my head, I only got one knife in my head. <laughs> Healthcare is better than no health care. So these days, doctors will force you to sign a statutory declaration asserting and approving that is a knife actually in your head before you get to take she a She has got it, ladies and gentlemen. The team's come through five points. In a bit to crack down on the great Australian sickie, people who want a doctor's certificate will now have to sign a declaration stating they're being honest about their symptoms. Oh, God, no. I mean, this, this should honestly work like a charm. Nobody would risk lying about something which can't be proved just to get a full day off with, you know, full pay. Well, there goes my, my next week off with leprosy. <laughs> Unless you find a, a tongue to stick in the envelope. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you sent a letter and saying, I'm sorry I can't come in, I've got leprosy, but there was a tongue in the envelope, that, that would be convincing. Yes, but, but how would you have licked that envelope? <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> All you've got to do if you really want to get a sicky ladies talk about thrush, you'll get it like that. That was my tongue again. <laughs> my tongue's been busy. <laughs> well, it's, it's been out and about on its own. <laughs> Taking a, it was having a licky. <laughs> Bill Kay! He's Scottish, don't you know? To make sure patients aren't lying about not lying about their symptoms, they have to sign another line under the line they've just signed, in which they certify they weren't lying then either. <laughs> then another line under that. Then another line under that. So even if they were lying, they can now get a certificate for RSI. <laughs> Seven out of ten doctors surveyed issued certificates without evidence of illness. It would have been ten out of ten, but on the day of the survey, the other three doctors were taking a sickie. <laughs> Mikey, Lynn, Phil, let me run this story by you. That's the beach. Oh, it's Bondi. Bondi Beach. It's a ma and that's, uh, that's a syringe on Bondi Beach. <laughs> that's, that was a leper's arm. Did you notice that? That's, um, <laughs> our, our, our foreign guest, that's Phil Coles, who's um, about to be disgraced, or allegedly disgraced, IOC delegate, who's been accused of basically everything from uh, drowning puppies to giving his wife jewellery, which was made from the puppies. It was uh, not... <laughs> oh, Melbourne. And uh, as an ex-athlete, he wants to run a, a lap with the Olympic torch, because in Australia, when the torch comes out here, you can, virtually anyone can get a go. To well, anybody. I mean, I could get a go if I wanted. Ah, uh, have you? Yeah, see, yeah. Don't see you grip something on fire. <laughs> Sweetie. Let's do an audition. Let's do, let's do an audition now. And uh, Phil, Phil Coles. Well, well, I, I, go, I well, don't do this. Well, well, no, but this is your chance, love. This is your chance to run no. the Olympic torch. Phil, Phil, is, Phil is representing Phil Coles. And. Oh. 
brothers. Asbestos man. He could have had. <laughs> he could have had someone's eye out with that. Um, Phil wants to run the Bondi Beach League, but uh, people are sort of saying, "Well, Phil, you've been a bit naughty. So would you mind, say, running maybe the Midnight Red Fern League? That'd be more fun." <laughs> they have it right, ladies and gentlemen. Five points. Embattled IOC member Phil Coles may run the Olympic torch one kilometre across Bondi Beach regardless of the outcome of an inquiry into claims that he took an illegal gift of jewellery worth $10,000. In the past, the torch relay has ended with a skier swooping into the stadium or a Paralympian firing a flaming arrow. In Sydney, the relay will end when Coles finishes his run, slips the flame into his wife's handbag and goes home. <laughs> SOCOG officials have agreed to let Phil carry the torch as long as someone explains to him that it's not a gift. <laughs> Even though his leg of the relay is only a thousand metres long, Phil's run is expected to take several days. Bondi has half a dozen five-star hotels he has to check in and out of. <laughs> now, the bad news is Jeff Kennett has allegedly offered Phil Coles five nights at the casino, airfares, a logie and a pair of zig and zag cufflinks <laughs> if he votes to have Bondi Beach moved to Melbourne. <laughs> so, can I ask you something? Yeah. Well, do you know, it's like, uh, are you going to have end knowing about Scotland at all? <laughs> because I don't understand this. You've had the BBC talking what I call London English for a long time. It's had absolutely no impact up your way. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand you, I'm just not interested. Oh. <laughs> can I get back to my original yeah. point? Which was, are you doing anything about Scotland? Because it seems to me... Moving it further north. Yeah, well, see, I know very little about news in Australia. Half of these people have never even heard of Scotland. <laughs> I've never even heard of thrush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll shag you. We're moving on now, though. After, so, after one, <laughs> so after one incorruptible round of Good News Week, the Macrossan team are on five points. The Robbins team are on five points. <laughs> and don't forget, I can be bribed. <laughs> During the break, as we drank a lot of red cordial, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. McCrossan, Hall, and Zamiro have a gavel, uh, a banjo. I have a banjo, the uh, national instrument of uh, the southern United States. They always got to relate it back to themselves, don't they? Hi, Green Vinegar. How, how many people saw Deliverance? How many people have seen Deliverance? Me! All right, all right. All right. I want to do my impression of Neil, of Ned Beatty uh, during the filming of Deliverance, stepping out of his trailer. Uh, guys. I don't have pages 28 through 35 in my script. What happened? And this. I'm picking up the breeze. He's giving me a citation. Don't freak us out by sharing one brain. And Robbins, Ferguson, and Kay got. A walking frame. And Brian Harradine wants it back. Oh. That's that. A roulette wheel. Whoa. And this. <laughs> <laughs> and the only, the only Beach Boys song I can think of that sums that up is Whoa, 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 I came around, I came around, <laughs> whoa, 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 I came around, I came around. <laughs> <laughs> to start round two, a game we call Bites, Mrs. McCrossan. So what does this erudite chap refer? NIMBY and NIMBYANA, that stands for not in my backyard and not at all. Well look, our charming gentleman's referring to what most people are a little anxious about having in their backyard, and that is of course... A plane. <laughs> <laughs> a plane? That's a, that could be a Sydney story, but in this case, ah. it's a nuclear reactor. Yes. See, I have no problem with that. I mean, the world's biggest barbecue. <laughs> well, no. They have it right, ladies and gentlemen, three points. 
Deputy Top Dog Tim Fisher has described the new nuclear facility at Lucas Heights in Sydney as a beautiful boutique nuclear reactor. <laughs> what does that mean? What is a boutique reactor? A place you would be seen dead? <laughs> Fisher says if Lucas Heights doesn't want it, he'd happily have the reactor in his own backyard. Maybe he's planning to breed a new race of mutant National Party members <laughs> so they can take on One Nation at their own game. <laughs> I can just see Tim wandering through the paddocks near his reactor singing, a little boutique has doused my sheep. <laughs> it does make it easy to find them. <laughs> As daylight is going, the sheep start a glowing and wagon three tails behind. Paul, as a, as a farmer, wouldn't he find the three tails confusing? Can I just say, I saw Burke's backyard and he was fidgeting with the tail of a tiny wee dog that, <laughs> that couldn't he fight back. And I thought, this is one fairly country, by the way. Didn't have three tails, did it, that little dog? Dead when he finished. Bada boom, bada bang, da bang. Mikey, a bite from one of your favourite people. Okay. <laughs> However difficult that may be for those girls better. and their families, I applaud the strength and purpose of the school. Can I get this one? This should, you got your life, baby. No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Paul, this is this is our um, our, our beloved uh, leader leader's response to uh, a PLC, a Presbyterian Ladies College, who recently uh, expelled uh, three girls for having marijuana. And John's come out as part of his zero tolerance uh, program, and said, uh, "Look, the best thing to do to you know help them get off drugs is to kick them out of school, where they can hang around, say say bus shelters and and movie theaters and pinball arcades where there are no drugs." <laughs> John Howard has come out in support of the exclusive Sydney Ladies College, which recently expelled nine teenage girls for smoking marijuana. The Prime Minister does feel sorry for the girls, but luckily they'll all qualify for the prostitution for the doll scheme. <laughs> what? Oh, what? A... That's terrible! As far as Howard is concerned, 14-year-old girls haven't earned the right to be given any breaks. Let them grow up first. Let them grow up, become very wealthy, end up in the Senate, have an obvious conflict of interest, and then, and only then, will he give him a break. <laughs> Howard argues a black and white attitude in an early age yields results, which is why he also wants zero tolerance for students caught swinging their chair on two legs, eating glue, and colouring outside the line. <laughs> and now, it's, it's PC now to copy zero tolerance because it's all the rage in New York and yet everyone poo-pooed zero tolerance when it was the strategy of choice for Stalin, Milosevic and Pol Pot. <laughs> <laughs> we like to call the next game Race Around the World. Players will be asked a series of questions relating to various hot news spots around the planet. Don't forget to keep your answers short because you are playing Never walk out halfway through, that's all I can say. <laughs> that's not, go, that's not what you said last someone time. Someone go urinate on their seats. <laughs> Did I get through that sense? <laughs> Let's now... <laughs> try not to give it away, try not to give it away, all right? <laughs> Are you ready? Mid the Miro. Here we go, question one. Yes. In Russia, what happened to Monica Lewinsky this week? They really wanted her there because even though the uh, Russians don't like Americans, they really want one to come and talk about her book and all her sex life. Yes, her book. In Melbourne, new opposition leader Steve Brax called for what? An idea. <laughs> In Melbourne, new opposition leader Steve Brax called for what? A camera. A camera. Don't help Thank them. you. You, I love on. you. You guys live in Melbourne. What's he called What's for? What's he called for? Anyone read the paper? Well, I'm not going to give it to you. Closed circuit TV cameras in the CBD to crack down on crime. But you didn't even crime. know that. <laughs> Did you know that? You no, don't... I knew. So how am I supposed to know? Oh, 
It's going to be it's going to be a cold tram ride home tonight. <laughs> Mark, in Sydney, two ambulance officers got into serious trouble for what recently? Oh, at a scene of an accident and someone was very sick, perhaps even dying, yes, dying. And they started to argue over who was going to administer mouth to mouth, yet maybe even just the, the drip. Argued or oh, actually got into oh, oh, some... They got into a big fight and they punched Thank you very much, Angela, you're going to go wild! <laughs> While a patient lay unattended inside the vehicle, two ambulance officers got out and started thumping each other when they couldn't agree on the proper treatment. The officers assured investigators they don't usually resort to fisticuffs to settle the dispute. Normally they each just grab a leg of the patient, pull, and the one with the biggest bit <laughs> wins. Of course, patients don't help matters by constantly bleeding or flatlining or asking, are we there yet? <laughs> but patients shouldn't be subjected to fights while waiting to go to hospital. They get enough of that at the other end, when they have to fight for a bed. <laughs> Ready to race around the world, Phil! What? In England, soccer star Robbie Fowler did what to enrage opposing fans? Shot most of them. No, um... <laughs> he, he took off a shirt and he was sponsored by somebody who showed the shirt as A, you've got to choose the answer, A, or B, he made a rude sign coupled with a physical gesture that involved actual excretion on the... <laughs> on the penalty spot. That's Australian Rugby League. Do players. you have... No, wait, wait. Do you have a C there? He scored the goal. That's going to enrage the fans, isn't it? <laughs> you have a point. Do you One have... One point! No, no. Okay. <laughs> One point, then, for that. In India, a school principal has done what to students who fail to do their homework? How do you spell principal? P-A-L or P-L-E? P-A-L. So a principal of schooling or yes, the head of the as school? in a school principal. The headmaster? Yes, what did not he do? the principal of the school. What did he do? Because the principal of the school... No, is... I'm asking you that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, I know. In India, a school principal has done what to students who fail to do their homework? Oh, he's made them redo it better? <laughs> <laughs> That's obvious. Thank you. I'm like giving it. him another point, ladies and gentlemen. That takes the total to two. He's burying them up to their necks. He's actually given them all crew cuts, leaving some bald spots. In the US, a new book on the Apollo moon landings claims what? Appalling moon landings? They weren't appalling, they were fantastic. <laughs> These guys went to great appalling. Up yours, mate. Yeah. Next you'll be saying it's just a mere space station, like no big deal. But it meant something to them. It meant something to the astronauts, okay? And don't, don't you succumb to his canny Scottish charm. <laughs> He's not even from Scotland. He's from St Kilda. <laughs> Our book on the Apollo moon landing. It can only be claiming that they never happened. They were kind of some kind of TV film adaptation. Of I can't believe it. He's right. I'm going to stop him right there and get him two points for that. He's got one. Sensational allegations have surfaced in a new book called Dark Moon, which oh. claims the Apollo moon landings were faked. <laughs> the book is based on the research of retired rocket scientist Bill Casing, who has a brilliantly clever theory. He says it would be highly unlikely for two men to wander all over the moon for hours and not mention once whether or not it was made of cheese. <laughs> Bill may have a point, there are some anomalies in the moon footage. For example, the shot where a makeup artist runs across the lunar surface with a Kleenex after Neil Armstrong sneezes in his space helmet. <laughs> The authors claim the fake moon landing studio was being used by other productions at the time. If you listen carefully during the one small step speech, you can actually hear a voice shouting, Danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> and now, buzzers of death! And Lynn Ferguson will face off over a series of current affairs questions. Five points if they're right, but they must wait until the question has been completed before they answer. Okay, okay let's check the buzzers. Mr. Hall. Yes. Push it down. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you did. I'll hold it a bit further away from my face. This is a good bit. I yeah. like this bit. Okay. And, and can I just say before I do it, this is nasty questions I don't know about. Okay. Okay, here we go. Lynn Ferguson. Oh. 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 That is close. Yeah. 
Nice timing on that one. You're a bit of a dancer, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know you had Spanish blood. Okay, question one. Pest eradication. An infestation of the invasive zebra mussel in Darwin could kill all other marine life in the area. How are Northern Territory authorities getting rid of them? A. Not yet! You've got to wait. You've got to wait to the end there. You've got to wait till the A.B. I'd take someone's eye out Can I just see object to that amount of flame near this amount of peroxide? <laughs> Buzz off, buzz off. Suddenly we know he's from NATO, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> A, the world's biggest mussel barbecue. Not yet. B, introducing the mussel's only known predator, the appropriately named <laughs> bastard crab. Or C, synchronised toilet flushing. <laughs> We're going with Rich Hall on that one. Which one is it, Rich? Oh, it's synchronised toilet flushing. No question about it. Are they right? Let's have a look. See, yes! Yes! The power of the S-Pen! Question two. Are we ready? You ready? Synchronized toilet flushing will be an Olympic sport, though. Question two. Dirty tricks. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is outraged over a photo montage published on the Israeli Labour Party website. What did not yet? What does the box art show? A. Netanyahu eating a bacon sandwich. B. Netanyahu's wife naked. Or C. Not yet! Or e Netanyahu kissing the bottom of Yasser Arafat. Let's have a look at that <laughs> Right. I think that could have been Lynn. Typical. It's typical. naked to winter. It's and naked. Go on. See which one is it? Which letter? You tell me the letter then. It's B. The naked, naked bit. Okay. Naked again. I love the way you're saying naked, 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 naked. I tell you, the word is actually better than the actual physical thing. <laughs> Let's have a look. See if Lynn's right. Scotland, winning for the first time since 1848. <laughs> Final question now, poetry. Well-known Hollywood vacuum cleaner, Charlie Sheen, <laughs> has recently published a book of poetry. Which of these touching poems can be found in it? A, Doctor, Doctor, is it fair? They cut off all my Medicare. Or B, agent, manager, publicist man, am I part of Oscar's plan? Or C, waking, shaking, lost in space, spiders crawling on my face. Spiders crawling on my face. C, <laughs> you're saying C? Charlie's been reduced to uh, doing more teen ads. Uh, C, you going with C? No, I'm going for B, because I think he's an egotistical B arsehole. You're going for oh. B? Oh. Okay, let's just see who's right. <laughs> no one! And for some reason, that makes me feel great. <laughs> Charlie Sheen has published 84 of his poems in a collection called A Piece of My Mind, written since 1984. 84 poems in uh, 15 years. That's about one poem every 10 weeks. Charlie must be an excellent time manager to squeeze all that poetry in between hot shots, movies, brothel appointments, and his ongoing commitment to lying face down in a gutter. <laughs> but it is very hard to argue, you know, with poetry like this. Powder, powder, burning white in the whorehouse every night. So long, Heidi. Glad to know you. Get dressed, honey. What do I owe you? <laughs> Sheen's old English teacher said it's a shame Charlie had become a well-known poet because he's always had such a gift for taking drugs and wasting his life. <laughs> and the scores now, ladies and gentlemen, that lot are on 23 points. That lot, 25 points. The game is seven days and seven seconds. Teams will see a quick montage of seven stories from the past week. All they have to do is identify them. It's so simple. Let's do it. Oh, this is the graphic. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, yeah.
All right. Julia Rich, Julie, first story. They were holding an animal. I think it was a chicken. My eyesight isn't very good. I'm so sorry. I'm old. Oh, I'm old. Oh, there's been a raids on battery hands in New South Wales. It's not a nice way to keep them, and the batteries come out filthy anyway. Next story to you. Uh, there were three little sheep. I think that that Lamb. sheep that was cloned has had children. Lamb. Dolly the sheep's had children. You do have it right. We're going to throw the next one. The um, Ninuit people of Alaska have been given uh, land rights. Uh, uh, in fact, they have uh, a degree of autonomy and independence over the top right-hand corner of uh, Canada. He's got it right, ladies and gentlemen. Question number four. Jerry Adams and Tony, Tony Blair. Blair. And I think Jerry Adams friendly. said, no, we're not going to give the arms back. It's, it's too frisky still in Ireland. So, so the peace choose. talks have broken down. They've broken down. Okay, Jerry, Jerry won't won't give up the the arms. Let's go back here. Yeah. Number five was the Miranda computer virus. Melissa, Melissa. It's Melissa, Melissa, Melissa. In the 90s, uh, in Scotland, it was called Melinda. <laughs> the next question, the sixth question, over to you. Uh, Nick Neeson, question. the guy who, um, yes. who caused the crash of Bearings Band by over-investing ahead of himself, tons and tons, 23 million billion in funds. <laughs> He's, kind of He's got it right! Okay, and I'm going to throw the last one over to anyone. Resign. I've always Thank liked you. to work. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give you two points each for that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Braveheart was right. That's terrifying. Uh, the stories were, ladies and gentlemen, after a raid on a battery farm in Canberra, a Democrat senator took the corpses of three dead hens to Parliament House. They haven't seen this much dead chicken since the government offered Mal Colston a lifetime supply of GST-free KFC. <laughs> Dolly the sheep and David the ram are the proud parents of three little lambs. Scientists immediately whisked the lambs away and sewed human ears onto them. <laughs> the Canadian region Nunavut, uh, which is Inuit for our home, is proclaimed an autonomous state, which is English for we don't want this bit. Northern Ireland peace talks break down when loyalists say they'll make no deal until the IRA hands in its guns and bombs. The IRA says without guns and bombs they're not an army and they'll have to change all the letterheads and business cards. <laughs> the arrest of the alleged originator of the Melissa computer virus, which spreads like a, an email chain letter. Uh, the suspect says if the judge lets him go, he'll receive 40 bucks a week for the next 10 years. Road trader Nick Leeson in jail in Singapore over a $2 billion fraud will be released three years early after a hostile takeover bid of his cellmate's good behaviour. <laughs> and for the first time since 1992, leg spinner Shane Warne is dropped from the Australian cricket team. He's he bowled better when he smoked. <laughs> Which coincidentally is also the last time he ate something that didn't have bacon in it. Oh, very funny. Cricket's most successful leg spin bowler, Shane Warne, may consider retiring after being dumped from the Australian Test team. He wants to retire just because he lost form and was dropped? Who does he think he is, Paul Keating? <laughs> Thank you. Shane could retire. <laughs> That'd teach Australian cricket a lesson, you know? Or he could just keep playing like shit. <laughs> Shane said he felt like he'd been kicked in the guts. But imagine how Australian captain Steve Waugh felt. Paramedics had to use the jaws of life to release his foot after the gut... <laughs> after the gut closed on it like a giant clam. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the imitation Macrossans are on 34 points. And the poor, sad, pathetic, hopeless what? Robins team yeah. are stuck on a miserable 32 points. Oh, come on! See, this, this is pure favouritism. The man, you have no integrity. You're just a lightweight performer. Oh. <laughs> but unlike a heavyweight performer like yourself. I mean, Paul, you know, what we need on the stage, we, we need someone, someone with guts, someone with kahunas, someone with integrity. Like who? Or, or someone who can rise up the working class and make them see what their lives should be. Someone like, say, I don't know, Billy Bragg. Oh, Billy Bragg. Where are you going <laughs> to... The particular, so the particular film of Ingrid Bergman that he loved was a film called Stromboli, in which um, she goes to a, uh, a volcano in Italy and falls in love whilst the volcano explodes. <laughs> This really moved Woody, and he did um, something that we singer-songwriters um, sometimes resort to. He, he wrote a song full of volcano phallus imagery. <laughs> In the course of this song, uh, I have to sing the word... 
Purdy. P-E-R-T-Y is what he wrote. Now, he may have meant pretty, but like in a Bruce Springsteen song, or he may mean excessively pert. I'll leave it to you to make your mind up. Remember, it's this folk music. Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, let's go make a picture on the island of Stromboli. Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, you're so pretty. You'd make any mountain quiver, you'd make fire fly from the crater. Ingrid Bergman, this old mountain, it's been waiting all its life for you to work it. For your hand to touch its hard rock. Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, if you walk across my camera. I will flash the world your story I will pay you more than money Great Bergman Not by pennies, dimes, nor quarters But with happy sons and daughters And they'll dance around Stromboli Great Bergman this old mountain, it's been waiting all its life for you to work it. For your hand to touch its hard rock. Uh huh. Ingrid Bergman. Ingrid Bergman. The ultimate battle is the game called Strange But True. Julia Ridge, Julia, your clues were the gavel. The gavel. The banjo <laughs> and that beautiful sound. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right, all right. I'll tell you what, that's how the white people clap in time. <laughs> banjo, bluegrass music, MC Hammer. <laughs> that banjo uh, came from Alabama. And the vibrations relate to sexual activity, which they're into controlling by law in this state. Because, yes, because not, you're not allowed to have sex in certain parts of Alabama, America, or the South. All with a banjo. But I think, I think the critical thing is the vibrations. I have a feeling it may relate to the law banning access to vibrating objects, which may bring pleasure, for example, cars idling at the lights. <laughs> Noticed in Alabama, girls a little bit over willing to rev their motorbike while possibly leaning forward. Jeez. We're saying that there has been legal action in Alabama to ban some form of sexual pleasure associated with inanimate objects. Uh, Are we in the ballpark? <laughs> you were in a ballpark, but you, it's not about the banning, it's about the repealing of laws. You mean we can vibrate in Alabama now? Yes, we can now. Well, American Airlines, here we come. <laughs> In the U.S., a judge has struck down an Alabama law that banned the sale of vibrators, saying the state had failed to prove the devices were obscene. You were wrong! Oh. The Alabama law previously barred the sale of items designed to enhance sexual pleasure. It's the only place in the world to introduce a buyback scheme for genitalia. <laughs> the judge said a vibrator itself was not obscene, but a vibrator with the optional pitting zoo pals attachment would be. I mean, look, think about it, of course vibrators aren't obscene. You know, it's what you do with them that often upsets people. After all, you know, Monica Lewinsky didn't succeed in getting cigars taken off the market. Ah, uh, but, but vibrating cigars? <laughs> Civil libertarians believe banning vibrators will drive them underground. <laughs> Is that why there's some earthquakes in California? <laughs> And in no time at all, they'd have to start warning people about the batch of really strong vibrators on the street. <laughs> Mikey, Lynn, Phil, you had the walking frame. I can get SPS with this. <laughs> the roulette wheel. And that. 
Ah. Well, well, this is a... Um, he's certainly given up. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the, the walking frame, of course, represents old people. Uh, this represents a casino, well, duh. It's, it's about old people in casinos, particularly in a Brisbane casino. They've had to put in defibrillators because uh, when, when Nana gets a big payout... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, laugh now while you're young. <laughs> oh, yeah, they've actually had to put defibrillators in. I just wanted to say that twice in one sentence because I haven't said it since we lost Grandpa. Um, you know what you can do with defibrillators? You get two little mice and you just hold them upright and you put the, defibrillator, the mice on the defibrillator to shoot them up like... <laughs> are you clear, mousey boy? Are you clear about who eats the cheese? Come on, are you... <laughs> Are you clear about it? They have got it right, ladies and gentlemen. They were right, they were wrong. Wrong, right, right, wrong. The company, Conrad International, has put defibrillators in both its Brisbane and Gold Coast casinos to help save punters who succumb to heart attacks. One casino even has a cardiac surgery team standing by, but so far every time someone's had a heart attack, the team's been in another part of the club collecting glasses. <laughs> Bouncers have also been given clearance to use the defibrillators to clear the bar at closing time. <laughs> now, if patrons have heart attacks, casino management is well prepared. A panel of doctors will quickly work out the odds of reviving the patient. Then there'll be a jackpot sweep <laughs> on how many jolts it'll take. Sadly, one patron has been banned from the casino because during a heart attack, he used the out-of-body experience as an opportunity to sneak a look at the croupier's cards. <laughs> The good news is Queensland is also introducing $2 instant scratchy doctor appointments. <laughs> Yay! I want a pap smear! <laughs> Who will win? Who will get? <laughs> In news just a hand, following the amazing success of his recent CD, Pope John Paul has now been offered a part in a major Hollywood movie. It's a sequel to There's Something About Mary. Meanwhile, in this pulsating arena, Julia McCross and Rich Hall and Julia Zamiro scored an artery hardening 34 points. <laughs> Broken hearted by Mikey Robbins, Lynn Ferguson and Phil Kay on a valve blocking 36 points. <laughs> So we say Good News Week returns to the Town Hall next Sunday for more first-class drivel from the Melbourne International Comedy Festival and leave you with the good news that after hearing Charlie Sheen was such a gifted poet, John Howard has invited him to help draft. <laughs> the second preamble. Uh, now, before you go completely crazy, just listen to what Charlie has come up with. People of Australia. My girlfriend's name is Lisa. She's a trim and busty teaser. It's not too hard to please her. She takes MasterCard or Visa. 